So this is Monica Smalley, and she's going to be talking to us about what we can do to help people that are living in food deserts. So this is Monica. Thank you. Like Sarah said, I'm Monica Smalley, and today we're going to be talking about food deserts. Not everyone has to wander alone, so talking about what we can do individually to help um, those that are living in food deserts. So I know I've been talking about food deserts a lot this semester. Um, once again, I'm going to define it for you. It's an area with limited access to affordable and healthy food, especially in low-income uh, communities. So I introduced it with my poster presentation and gave you a training demonstration how to grow food in your home um, in a sunny spot in a window on your porch. And I also informed you about convenience stores and what food is available there. Uh, because most of the people in food deserts, that's where they shop, that's where they get their food. Um, it spoke about the, the um, things that are being put in place, the amendments being put in place to help in increase the healthy food that's available and decrease the price of produce that is available in these stores. It's a lot of new information. I know that when I speak to people about food deserts, many of them don't know what they are, so I explain it to them. And it makes sense because it's only 13% of the United States population living in food desert, and so it seems like that's not that big a deal. But when you think about it, that's also that's 23 and a half million people within the United States that are living in food insecure areas. And I hope that that stirs something in you. I know it does in me. Uh, I don't want these people to be hungry. I don't want them living in an area where they can't reach uh, affordable food for them. And um, I don't want them to have to rely on convenience stores and fast food restaurants for their main in in intake of food. So what can we do? Um, uh, today we cover donating, volunteering, starting your own food pantry, which seems really scary, and uh, just being informed. Uh, it doesn't apply to us, right? Like we're in Blacksburg, and this is in the food desert, but has anyone heard of Floyd County? It's uh, about 30 minutes away from here, that's actually a food desert. Um, really close to us. There's an organization called Plenty. Uh, they are a food bank. They are donation-based and they also grow their own food on site for this food bank. Um, anyone that lives in Floyd County is welcome to come and get food, but you must live within Floyd County because that's the food desert. Um, and if we think about the problem of transportation, many of these people, food is really far, they can't reach it. Plenty will actually, if you can't get there, they will bring food to you with no additional charge either. This is a really cool organization. But what, again, what does that mean for us? What are we going to do about it? Well, the first thing that we can do is donate. You can donate your time, your money, your resources. And then also something that I found out a few weeks ago that's really cool is that you can set up your grocery rewards card, or for me, my poker card. Um, that every time you buy at Kroger and you use your card, it'll donate to a nonprofit of your choice that has, um, you know, signed up for this, um, this rewards thing. Uh, so for me, I set it up for Plenty, the one I was just talking about. And so now that every time I buy at Kroger and I use my card, they'll donate to Plenty. It's any nonprofit that registers with Kroger or any grocery store that you use. Um, and it's, I really like this version of donating too because it's not costing you any extra money. It's just taking from what you already, like you already have to buy your groceries. And it's taking from that and allowing you to donate to people or organizations that need it. Um, you can donate locally, you can donate anywhere that you feel led to, but I feel like we should definitely donate somewhere because we are able to and we should help those that are less fortunate than we are next thing that we can do is volunteer. Volunteers are always needed, in, especially in food banks. Uh, they make a huge difference. They, make or, they sometimes make or break the organization. Um, they, volunteers are the hands and feet that assist these organizations in being able to reach the community, reach more people. And it costs nothing to volunteer. I know that donations they kind of like, oh, I don't want to spend extra money on this, but if you're volunteering, you're not spending anything, you're just giving your time to these people who need it. And something that's kind of scary is starting your own food pantry. Uh, but my friend, who she goes here, uh, her in the 
fall of 2013, she saw a need within the community at Virginia Tech that students that received financial aid um, still had difficulties buying food, buying their groceries. And so she started, with the help of her campus ministry, she started a food pantry um, so that these people could come and get food because they weren't able to afford it themselves. Um, and it took a lot of perseverance and dedication to this. But she saw the need and she wanted to help, so she brought together the community to, she brought together the people to better the community. Oops. And lastly, being informed. I know this one kind of seems like a cop-out step to take, like, oh, I'm not going to donate, I'm not going to volunteer, I'm not going to start my own food pantry, so I'll just be informed. But I don't think that's fair, because I do think that being informed is really important. Um, it gives the people like space within your life, knowing about them, knowing about what they're going through. Excuse me. Um, these people, they like we don't like to think about people living in food deserts. It doesn't make us happy, so it's not something that we think about a lot. But by um, by knowing and sharing about these people and what they're going through, we give them space within our lives. We increase our own awareness and others and we can spread that information around to people. They, they deserve to occupy our thoughts. They deserve a better life, healthy food, and good prices for that food. So there are many ways that we can help within food deserts, cover donating, volunteering, starting your own food pantry, as well as being informed about what's going on. Volunteers really are the backbone of these organizations. They can't really function without them. They allow the organizations to go further throughout the community and affect more lives than if they were just working on their own with their own staff. Donations are also super essential. If organizations were working just by themselves with the supplies that they had, it wouldn't make as big a difference. It can really make or break the organizations because it puts so much more pressure on them. And starting a food pantry is really daunting. It's probably not something you feel like you want to do because it's just such a scary thing, but it's an incredible resource for those that need it. And um, though it's a big challenge, it's super rewarding for those that are in charge and those that are receiving from it. And then lastly, being informed is really, it's also really important. It, um, having the knowledge allows for discussion and it raises awareness and it increases the action that can be taken um, to help fight against these food deserts. And even though we don't live in one here, the food deserts are still affecting us, like they're local, and there are many ways that we can become involved to um, help those that are less fortunate than us. And I hope that you will engage in behavior that helps those around you.